guys, it's Elena here. Happy National Waffle Day. Hi, it's Shani from Chan's Kitchen. Happy National Waffle Day. Hey guys, it's Brianna from Web Was Done and I'm here with my family and we just want to wish you a Happy National Waffle Day. Sarah here from Starving to Strong. Happy National Waffle Day. Hey guys, Elena here with Honest Grub, Honest Foodie. Happy National Waffle Day. Let's grab a waffle and join in on their amazing waffle virtual event. Hey, it's Erin. Happy National Waffle Day. Have a waffly good time. Hey everyone, it's Jordo from Jordo's World. Happy National Waffle Day. Today is my new favorite holiday. Let's celebrate. Hey, it's Alice at Honestly Fitness here. Happy National Waffle Day. We're so excited that you're tuning in. My name is Lorel Oliveira. Happy National Waffle Day to you guys out there. What's up everyone, it's Jamar the Pancake God. Happy National Waffle Day. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. Hey, it's Cindy and happy National Waffle Day. I'm so excited that you've tuned in for Kodiak Cakes virtual event. Now, let's get the party started. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. Happy National Waffle Day. So I'm Joel Clark. I'm the CEO and one of the founders here at Kodiak Cakes. Yeah, it's great to have you here. I'm Cameron Smith. I'm a president, our president and co-founder as well with Joel. It's crazy to think about where we've come since we started. So when I was eight years old, I went around the neighborhood and sold little homemade pancake mixes to all of our neighbors um, in brown paper lunch sacks that my mom had put together for me. And uh, since then, we've grown a ton. Yeah, I joined Joel in uh, 2009, so a little over 11 years ago. And uh, when, we, when I first joined, we really targeted Costco. So we would do road shows, these events at Costco every weekend. Uh, Joel and his wife would help, my wife would help. And so it was really a family event, just trying to make Kodiak a, a more of a household name. And then I remember in 2014, Cameron came to me one day and he's like, hey, I'm going to get us on Shark Tank. And I'm like... Go to town, I've never even seen the show. Hey Sharks, I'm Joel Clark. And I'm Cam Smith. And our product is Kodiak Cakes. We're here seeking $500,000 in exchange for 10% of the business. Cameron sent an email in to Shark Tank and then they responded and we went on the show. For those of you who didn't finish seeing the episode, we actually didn't take the deal, which was unfortunate, but the exposure was, was awesome for the brand and, and helped a lot of people discover Kodiak for the first time. Yeah, it was incredible. I mean, we sold out of stores right after that for a long time. And so that gave us this momentum to really keep growing. And so now we have 70 products and we're in most of the grocery stores around the country. Yeah, we really want Kodiak to be a staple in everyone's pantry. We see it as a way to keep you energized in whatever activities you're trying to do. And it's important to have a Kodiak as, as, as a part of that journey for you. And it's important for us to make sure that our products are delivering on that. Yeah, we're trying to inspire people to live more active and to eat healthier and we appreciate you joining us on that journey. So now we're gonna kick it back over to Lily. Thanks, Joel and Cameron. The Kodiak Cake story truly never gets old. I'm Lily, and I handle partnerships here at Kodiak Cakes, and I wanna personally thank you from me and the Kodiak team for tuning in today to our live National Waffle Day virtual event. It's going to be so much fun and we have so many things to do today, so I'm gonna give you a quick rundown. But before I do that, we'd love to hear from you on social. So if you post anything about this event, make sure you use the hashtag KodiakNWD for National Waffle Day. And tag us so we can share all of your fun stories. So let's go ahead and get the rundown for today. We're gonna to start with a 20 minute HIIT workout and a 20 minute yoga workout with Asia and Amanda. And then we're gonna do a few Kodiak giveaways. So make sure you remember your yoga mat, water bottle, and some tennis shoes. Then we're going to go to Sarah, who's a food stylist, and she's going to be teaching us how to build and create our own custom waffle boards. So if you wanna participate in that, make sure you bring your frozen power waffles, any toppings you'd like to add to your board, and then of course, a board. And then we're gonna hit it off to Shanna and Aubrey. Shanna is a registered dietitian and Aubrey is a recipe developer. And they're going to be answering all of your questions about health, wellness, and nutrition. And then after the event, they worked with us to make a custom National Waffle Day cookbook. We have a long day ahead, so let's kick it off to Asia and Amanda. Grab your yoga mat, your tennis shoes, and of course a water bottle, and let's go. with Flexi and I am super excited to be here with you celebrating National Waffle Day. We're gonna get started with a 20 minute HIIT workout. Don't be scared, you can modify everything and we're gonna make it fun. 
So let's get started with a warm up. We're gonna do 30 seconds of each warm up move. Gotta get my timer out so I can time us. All right, we're gonna start with hip circles. We're gonna take our hip, knee goes up and circle out and then do your other leg. Remember that this is your workout. So if you wanna modify anything, that is awesome. If you wanna make it harder, that's great too. Keep going about 15 seconds. Grab some water whenever you want to. Take a breather whenever you want to. We're here to work hard, but have fun at the same time and celebrate. All right. Now we're gonna do some knee drives. So we're gonna push up to one of our toes and drive our other knee up. So switch legs, just go back and forth. If you wanna get a little wild, you can do a little hop. Just getting all of those muscles in our legs warmed up. We're gonna do the warm up twice. All right, we're gonna switch in a few seconds. Three, two, one. Let's do some booty kicks. Get those heels up. Keep going, getting warm. Just a few more seconds. And then we're gonna go to the floor for a second. All right, let's take it down. We're gonna go into a plank really quickly. And then we are going to push back, take our booty high, tap your shin. Switch legs and tap your opposite shin each time. Good. We have some modifications going on. So always check. You can do any modification you'd like for these. And I'll even show you a few. Few more seconds. All right, let's rest. Come back to the top. So you can see we've got some lovely ladies doing the workout with us. They're gonna be doing some of the modifications. We've got a new mama to be here, so she's gonna be doing some too. Um, we're gonna go through that warm up one more time before we get started. Let's start again with our hip circles. Keep going. Feeling warm? Yeah. Getting warm? <laughs> Good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the knee drive really quickly. So right here, or you can just push to that toe and get your calf warmed up. Pull that knee up. Good job. Yes. She's getting some air over here. I like it. <laughs> I like it. All right, we've got booty kicks. Get those heels up to your glutes. Your modification for this is to step. If jumping is too much, you can always take the jump out and just do the move without it. A few more seconds, you got this guys. Go to the modification if you need to. And we're ready for our plank again. Use this to get your arms and your shoulders nice and warm. So really push back, tap your shin. You can see she's going to her knees. That is a great modification for the plank. Just a few more guys there. I promise you get a breather. And rest, good job. Okay, feel warm? Yeah, okay. So we are going to, I'm gonna go through all the exercises and show you guys really quickly before we get started. You don't have to do them right now. Grab a water, grab a towel, whatever you need to prepare and just watch. First thing we're gonna do is a plank walkout with a plank jack. So we are going to bend over, walk our hands out, plank jack. Walk back in and come up. So a modification for that, you can simply walk out hold that plank and walk back up, or you can even stay in your plank and just do a plank jack from there or tap. Cool? The next one we're gonna do is a lunge, squat, lunge. It's exactly what it sounds like. So we're gonna lunge back, we're gonna squat in the middle, then we're gonna lunge to the other side, going back and forth. If you wanna make it harder, this turns in to a squat jump. Cool? So your modified is just taking the jump out, 
just squatting and going to your own level of depth. All right, our next one is going to be a tricep push-up, and we are walking to the side. Pace yourself on these. So we are going to be keeping our elbows in tight. Our hands are right under our armpits. We're gonna do a push-up, walk to the side, push-up, walk to the side, push-up. So your modification, drop to your knees, push-up, walk, push-up, walk, okay? And then last but not least, curtsy lunges. We are just going to be crossing over our center line. So cross that front, or sorry, that back leg <laughs> behind your front leg. It's okay if your balance is still waking up. Cross over, back and forth. Your modification for this is just to go a little bit slower and not as deep, okay? You guys ready? All right, we're gonna get started. I've got my trusty timer. We're starting with the plank walkout with the plank jack. We get 45 seconds of work, 15 seconds to rest, and during that rest, catch your breath, grab a drink. We're going through it three times. All right, here we go. Plank walkout and plank jack in three, two, one, let's go. Walk out, plank jack. Walk it back in. Walk out, plank jack. Good, walk it back in. Go at your own pace. Modify if you need to. Good work. Make sure you're breathing. Whew. Good. All right, we've got 15 seconds left, and then we get 15 seconds to rest. Almost there. One more. And rest. Good job. Walk it out, grab a drink, whatever you need to do. 10 seconds until we go to our lunge, squat, lunge. Whew, my heart rate is up. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, lunge, squat in the middle, lunge to the other side. Back and forth the whole time. If you wanna get crazy, add that squat jump in. Land really softly. Go at your own pace. Modifying this is just going a little bit slower. So you've got a little more time to catch your breath and feel those muscles working. Back and forth. 15 seconds left, guys. We've got this 10 seconds. You can do it. Five seconds left. And rest, good job. Whew. Catch your breath. All right, tricep push-ups are next with our little sidewalk. All right, five seconds. Let's get ready. Three, two, one, push-up. Walk to that side. Back and forth. You can always modify. Keeping those elbows in tight for a tricep push-up. This one's gonna feel extra long, but you can do it. Just pace yourself. We've got 15 seconds left. Whew. You can breathe, you can make noise, it's all good. We're all breathing hard. 10 seconds, you can do it. Those arms are burning, I know. Keep going, almost there. Rest, good job. Whew. Shake those arms out. We're doing curtsy lunges next, so your arms get a break. Five seconds. All right. Three, two, one. Cross over that center line. Curtsy lunge. Come back to the middle. Whew. Good job. This is a good chance to breathe because we're going to do it all again. Whew. We've got 25 seconds left. You can do anything for 25 seconds, right? I think so. <laughs> Keep moving. We got this. We're here to have fun, so go at your own pace. We've got less than 10 seconds. Woo! Almost there. 
rest. Round one is done. We're going to do it two more times, <laughs> you know, just for fun. Whew, I know you guys are working hard, so make sure you get some water and towel off a little. Three seconds till those plank walkouts. And go. Walk out, plank jack, and walk it back in. Going at your own pace, getting water if you need it. We've got some mama modifications over here, so follow those if you need to. Keep that core tight. You don't have to go super fast on these. Just squeeze that belly button towards your spine and really engage your core and breathe. We're almost there. Five seconds, get one more in. You can do it and rest. Good job, you guys. Squat, lunge, squat. You know what to expect on all of these now, so you know if you can go a little harder or if you kind of got worn out at the end. Three seconds and go. Lunge, squat, and lunge. Jump in the middle if you're feeling wild. We are celebrating after all, so let's party. Let's do some squat jumps. Yeah. Good job. We're landing soft doing those squat jumps. This is great. Embrace that burn in your legs. They will thank you later, I'm sure. 10 seconds. Woo! Five seconds. You've got this. And rest. Catch your breath. Good job, you guys. All right. 10 seconds. Then we have some push ups. Everyone loves push ups. Five seconds. Breathe. And let's go. Down to the floor, tricep push up, walk to the side. Good. Modify if you need to. Good work, you guys. Pace yourself on these. I know they're hard, but you can do it. Keep going. Good work, we've got 15 seconds. Almost there, keep pushing. Literally push yourself up. You got it, and rest. Good job. We've got curtsy lunges. And then we'll take a little extra break after this round. Breathe, towel off, towel that glisten off. Three seconds, curtsy lunges are up next. Here we go, curtsy lunge. Like I said, it's okay if your balance is off. I've almost fallen over twice. We're here to have fun. It's no stress. And breathe. Whew. The best part is that you get to do yoga after this and stretch it all back out with Amanda. 20 seconds left. Then we'll take a full minute rest. I'm feeling nice. It's National Waffle Day after all. Five seconds, guys. Keep going. And rest. Woo. Let's give yourselves a minute to breathe. Then we're going to knock out this last round. And you're going to just kill it. Every exercise, the most energy you have. We'll take a little bit to breathe. 45 seconds left. Whew. All right. Keep going. Get my timer ready for all the fun. Breathe it out. My favorite thing to do when I'm like recuperating is to walk in circles. I don't know why. I like to walk in circles and like just forget that I'm breathing hard and that my heart rate's up. I can dance it out. Whatever you want to do. Get a drink of water. Tell yourself how awesome you are for working out this morning. <sighs> Breathe. All right, you guys. About 10 seconds. 
Then we're going to do it one more time through. You can do it. If you miss some of those reps at the end, that's okay. Just really push yourself and know that you're at home. So it's okay if you collapse on the ground afterwards and need to breathe. All right, let's go in three, two, one, go. Plank walkout with a plank jack. Whew. Breathe at the top. I like a nice deep breath at the top. Whew. Yes. Does anyone else think about snacks while they're working out? I'm currently thinking about snacks, waffles in particular. <laughs> 15 seconds left. Time flies when you're thinking about waffles. I'm convinced we're almost there. Last time on this exercise, give it your all and rest. 15 seconds, then we're doing our lunge, squat lunge. Whew. If you haven't tried the squat jump, but you think you're capable, give it a try. See how those legs feel. It's the last time, you can do it. All right, here we go. Lunge, squat, lunge. <laughs> it's okay. It's the morning, it's the weekend. We get to be a little wobbly, right? Almost there, you guys. You're halfway through this. Just breathe, get through it. Wipe those drips off your face. Almost there. 10 seconds left. Finish it strong. This is the last time on this exercise. You're killing it. And rest. Woo! Shake those legs out. Breathe. We're going back to our tricep push up for the last time. Those arms are gonna be on fire. In three, two, one, tricep push up. And walk it over. Don't worry about getting super deep. Just worry about keeping proper form and feeling good. Breathe it out. You've got this guys. Even if you're modified, I'm modified. We are still working hard. 15 seconds, woo! Which means you're like one minute away from the end of your workout. Almost there, keep going. Get one more push up. I know it burns, woo! And rest. Okay, we've got curtsy lunges. So literally like one minute until the end of your workout. Breathe it out. Let's finish these curtsy lunges strong. Whew. I'm having fun. I hope you guys are too, even though you're breathing hard. And curtsy lunge, here we go. Last time, make it count. Whew. Good job, guys. You can speed it up if it's too easy. Go back and forth a little quicker. Whew. Breathe. Think about some nice fun yoga after this, some waffle boards. We're almost there. We are almost there. 15 seconds, you guys. You can do it. Breathe through it. Embrace the burn. Give yourself a high five. I'm cheesy like that. And rest. Good job. Yay. Air fives, yes. Good job, you guys. Thank you so much for doing this HIIT workout with me. I hope you enjoyed it. I have had a blast. I am out of breath and I'm ready for some waffles and some yoga. What about you guys? Breathing. Good job. We are about to go to some giveaways. So stay tuned. Giveaways are up next and you're gonna wanna win. <laughs> Hey guys, can everyone hear me? Are we good to do giveaways? Yep. 
Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We're so excited to be doing some giveaways for you guys. We have a lot of great Kodiak swag that we can't wait to give you. On your screen, you're going to see what we'll be giving away today. You'll have three chances to win one of these packs. So just to kind of go through them again, we're going to be doing an adventure pack. It has our famous Kodiak Topo backpack with a fleece blanket. We have a hydro flask in there, a hat, and a few other things that you can take on any adventure. So look out for that. We also have a Kodiak Fit Pack, which has a Kodiak yoga mat, a beanie, a hat, and a hydro flask. And then we also have a Kodiak cooking pack. This includes one of our nice Kodiak mixing bowls, a whisk, some wooden cutlery, and uh, one of our waffle boards. So you, Whenever Sarah comes on the screen and does her waffle board class, you can join along with one of those. And then lastly, we have the Kodiak apparel pack. We have the comfiest sweatshirt ever. It's, and we also have a hat. And so we're going to go ahead and pick. We have Danielle, Kodiak Danielle, picking winners right now. So let's go ahead and draw for the, which one should we do first, Danielle? We're gonna be drawing for the adventure pack first. So. Write in the comments who's excited. Start blowing up the comment feed. All right, the first winner of the Kodiak Adventure Pack is Suzanne. And your email, what we have is not to spam you, Suzanne0868086. Suzanne086. Uh, congrats. Kodiak Casey is going to be putting in the comments what to do next if you win. Um, but just so you guys can hear it, you're going to be emailing collabs at KodiakCakes.com with the subject giveaway winner, National Waffle Day event. We'll get your information and we'll make sure these get sent out to you. So let's go ahead and draw for the second for the Kodiak fit. Taylor, Tay Peterson, 32. Woo! You can't hear it, but we're getting pumped back here. <laughs> All right, let's draw for the Kodiak cooking pack. Right? Yeah. Yep, okay. Yeah. Vicky, V Myers, 26. Congrats, Vicky. I always knew you'd win. All right, <laughs> let's now draw for the final giveaway of this round, and it's going to be for the Kodiak apparel pack. Stephanie, Stephanie Wright, 212. I know you're a DIN ambassador. Shout out to the DIN ambassadors. If you're a DIN ambassador, make sure you put it in the comments and we might have to send you a free box. So can't wait for all of you to just be part of the event. And we're so excited. We're going to be doing more giveaways. So make sure you stay tuned and, and look in the comments. And I think it's time that we start some yoga. So one minute. Good morning. Thank you so much, everyone who's joining us for our National Waffle Day kickoff celebration event. My name is Amanda of Namaste in KC, and I'm so excited that you're starting your day not only with an amazing HIIT workout from my friend Asia, but also sticking around for a little yoga and some fun activities after this. So to get started with our yoga this morning, I invite you to come to a comfortable seated position on your mats. Yeah, so whatever is happening around you in your house, this is an opportunity for you to just plug in with your breath to really get grounded, to start your day off on a really positive note. Yeah, so come to a comfortable seat. Your palms can be up or opportunity maybe to bring one hand to your heart and one hand to your belly and an invitation to start to close down your eyes. Yeah, so gently close down your eyes and breathe in to a count of five, four, three, two, one. Hold at the top and exhale for five, four, three, two, one. 
my heart is already racing. I'm so nervous and so excited to be with you. Don't even have the excuse that I took Asia's class that I'm out of breath. <laughs> but here we are together, noticing your breath. Breathe in for five, four, three, two, one. Hold at the top and exhale it out through your nose with a slight constriction at the back of your throat for five, four, three, two, one. I was listening to a podcast the other day that was talking about how only in the present moments can we really find gratitude. Yeah, so when we're really plugged into, you know, thinking about things that happened in the past, there can be that feeling of nostalgia, maybe a little bit of sadness, yeah, for things that are no longer with us. And if we're thinking about the future, there can be a bit of anxiety, apprehension, a little bit of fear at times. Yeah, so in these strange times where you can really plug into gratitude is in the present moment. So today, that is my invitation to you to move from a place of gratitude for your body, for what it's capable of. Yeah, and just do and move in a way that feels good. One more big breath in, five, Four, three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. And on your next inhale, gently start to blink your eyes open. Yeah, maybe give yourself a few shoulder rolls. Squeeze your shoulders up towards your ears, then drop them away from your ears, down your back. Yeah, maybe. Move your head from side to side, and then gently start to press yourself up into tabletop. Come to all fours, yeah, and your shoulders stack right over your wrists. Toes can be tucked or untucked. Find a neutral spine. Take a moment just to plug into what's connected to your mats. Yeah, and then on your inhale, we'll move into cow pose. So send your gaze up, drop your belly low, press the mat away from you, breathe in, and exhale, move through cats, curl your spine. Yeah, you ladies look awesome. Inhale to cow, and exhale to cats. Just warming up the spine. Yeah, a great option here can be to roll your hips from side to side, just inviting in any organic movements, working out those snap, crackle, pops. We all have them, <laughs> some of us more than others as we get older. Yeah, and then come back to that neutral spine, tabletop position, take a huge breath in and exhale, let it out. Lift your right fingertips to the sky. Yeah, and then you can start to roll out your wrists a few times. Take it the opposite direction. And then start to thread the needle. Bring your hands all the way through. Stretch your left fingertips out in, fr in front of you. And sink your hips back towards your heels. A nice option here, too, can be to take a half bind. Yeah, or again, keep those left fingertips stretched in front of you. Breathe in and breathe out. Nice work. On your next inhale, press back to your tabletop position. And this time, lift your left fingertips high. Yeah, you can start to roll out your wrists. Spread your fingers wide. Turn the corners of your mouth up. Sunday morning, National Waffle Day kickoff, and we get to do yoga. Thread the needle, bring your left hand all the way through, right fingertips stretch out in front, or option to find that half binds. Yeah, so good. Breathe into that nice shoulder opening. Yeah, one more huge breath in, and a deep exhale out. Ooh, press yourself back up, tabletop. Yeah, now start to tuck your toes. And on your next inhale, send your hips to the sky for your first downward facing dog, probably of the day. Yeah, you can maybe start to pedal out your feet. I like to bend one knee, then the other. 
option to lift the leg. Yeah, and then bend your knee, heel towards your glute, three-legged dog, maybe roll out your ankle. Again, there's no right or wrong in the way you move today. You could stay, yeah, in this pose for the entirety of practice. You could take child's pose. The whole goal is just for it to feel good. Meet in a place of stillness in your downward facing dog. Feet are hip width distance apart. Yeah, and if your heels already touch your mats, invite in a little extra space. Maybe you crawl your hands forward. Yeah, drop the weight of your head. Huge breath in together. And exhale. Ha. Come high up on your toes and start to take baby steps all the way to the front edge of your mats. Grab opposite elbows. Hang for ragdoll. Yeah, you can start to rock side to side. Maybe bring one elbow forward, the other back. Invite a gentle bend into your knees. Yeah, try and keep your joints lubricated. You don't want to lock out your joints during practice. Drop your fingertips to the mats. And then start to plant your right fingertips in between your feet. We'll take a nice twist here, left fingertips to the sky, slight bend through your right knee. Maybe you start to roll out that wrist again. And then exhale, switch sides, left fingertips plant. You can kind of cupcake those fingertips, stay light through your fingertips. Cupcake, that sounds good. Not as good as waffles, but <laughs> roll out your wrist. Yeah, and then release, forward fold, slowly one vertebrae at a time, start to rise all the way up. Yeah, and then we'll take extended mountain. So reach your fingertips high to the sky, spread your fingers wide, send your gaze up, 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 up. Yeah, squeeze your shoulders up towards your ears. Then again, drop them away, big breath in. And exhale, hands come through heart center. Let's do that again. Inhale, reach up, fill up, and exhale, hands through heart center. One more time, reach high, shift your gaze up. Maybe even invite in a baby back bend. You can cactus your arms, shift your gaze up and back, and reach up, extended mountain. Exhale, fold forward all the way down, deep forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, hands come to your shins, lengthen through the crown of your head, gaze six inches in front of you, and exhale, fold. Let's take that again one more time. Halfway lift, shoulder blades squeeze together. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up, extended mountain. Exhale, baby back bends, hips stay forward. Inhale, reach up, extended mountain, and exhale, fold. Halfway lift, lengthen. Exhale, step your right foot back, low lunge. Yeah, so kind of frame your left foot with your fingertips on either side. Yeah, high up on your back toes, start to plant your right fingertips. And we'll take low lunge with a twist, left fingertips reach. Try and keep your hips even. Again, option to circle out your wrists. We put a lot of pressure on our wrists throughout the week. Shift your gaze high. Yeah, and then start to get light through your right fingertips. Yeah, ground through your left foot and we'll rise up in the twist. Yeah, so awesome work. Your gaze starts to go over your back fingertips. Breathe here. Yeah, this is a deep twist, especially for this early in practice. So just be gentle with yourself. Now take a huge breath in and exhale to stay. Stay low in your front knee. Inhale, exalted warrior. Left palm goes behind your back. Right fingertips circle high above your head. Option to start to shift that gaze to find that baby back bend again. Huge breath in and exhale. Cartwheel your arms down to the mat. Frame your foot. Step back through high plank. 
Yeah, and then slowly start to lower, just halfway down, peer over the front edge of your mat, tricep push-up, flip your feet, upward facing dog, tops of the feet press into the mat, thighs are lifted, tuck your toes, downward facing dog, breathe in, and breathe out, look to the front edge of your mat, bend through your knees, find a step or a jump to the front edge. Halfway lift, forward fold, rise all the way up, extended mountain, huge breath in, and on your exhale, fold it deep down. Halfway lift, exhale fold, this time left leg steps back. Yeah, low lunge, frame your foot, try and stay light on those fingertips. Plant your left palm, right fingertips to the sky, low lunge with a twist. Now again, you can start to roll your wrists a few times. Yeah, maybe invite in that smile. Yeah, even if you're all alone or doing yoga with your dog, smile never hurt anyone. Yeah, start to get heavy through that right foot, light through your left fingertips and rise up in the twist. Ooh, so good. Yeah, shaking is good. Wobbling is good. Means you're human. We're all human. I hope. <laughs> fingertips are ignited. Energy through each fingertip. Shift your gaze to those back fingertips. Stay with it. One more. Exhale. Exalted warrior. Right palm comes behind your back. Left fingertips circle high overhead. Again, finding that nice baby back bends and breathing, shaking, yeah, staying with it. One more breath in and exhale, circle your hands down to the mat, bring your foot, step back, high plank, lower just halfway, flip your feet, upward facing dog, exhale, downward facing dog. Great work, guys. Take a big breath in and open your mouth. Let out a little stress, a little tension, and we move on. Look to the front edge, bend your knees, step or jump. Halfway lift, forward fold. Big toes come to touch, chair pose. Ooh, everyone's favorite. <laughs> Light up through your fingertips. Yes, yeah, sink your tailbone low. A nice little trick I like to do is to graze my mat with my fingertips. Helps me find kind of an even deeper chair. Your legs are probably already on fire from Asia's workout, but let's just stick with it. <laughs> Hands come through heart center. Inhale, lengthen through the crown of your head and on your exhale, prayer twist to the right. Yeah, check back in with those knees. See that they're still in one line. There's a tendency for those to kind of come off center. So just make a little adjustment. Option to start to split your palms if that feels good. Yeah, lots of twists, really good for detox, for kind of digestion as you're digesting your waffles later today. Yeah, stay with it, sink your tailbone low. And then exhale, fold, bring your feet back out to hip width distance. Take your peace fingers and grab around your big toes for monkey. Can start to shake your head yes, shake your head no. Bend through your knees as much as feels good. Yeah, you're doing so well. You're doing something good for yourself. Yeah, me sharing this with a friend and release your toes, inhale, half lifts, exhale, fold, chair pose, big toes come back together, yeah, biceps by your ears. Another option or modification if this doesn't feel good is to open up again and take those cactus arms. Yeah, so good, hands come through heart center, inhale to lengthen, exhale to twist left, Again, checking in with those knees, just making little adjustments. Yeah, just because you land somewhere doesn't mean that's where you need to stay. Yeah, so adjust where you need. 
modify where you need. Breathe in, exhale, twist open. Together, fill up one more huge breath in. Exhale to twist and rinse. And then exhale, fold, feet come back out to hip width. Flip your palms, step as far up onto your wrist crease as you can. Give your wrist, again, a nice little massage. Play with balance. Maybe you shift your weight forward. If you fall at home, no one's gonna know. <laughs> You'll catch yourself anyway. Breathe in and exhale, release. Plant your palms, step back through high plank, and then send your hips to the sky, downward facing dog. However you'd like to get to your backs, you can come down to your knees, maybe jump through your hands. Yeah, and we'll take it onto our backs. Awesome work. First, bring your feet out in front of you. Let's take a seated forward fold. Reach your fingertips high, flex through your feet. And then exhale, start to fold forward. Maybe you grab onto your shins. Maybe you grab onto your toes. Maybe you have a towel or something close to you that you can use as a strap to bring your feet a little closer to you. Keep your spine long, breathe in. And exhale, fold a little deeper. Great work, release your whatever you have and start to roll down with the C curve in your spine all the way down to your backs. Nice big full body stretch. Yeah, we'll take a hip opener on our back. So cross your right ankle over your left knee, interlace your fingertips back behind your left knee, right elbow on your right knee, start to squeeze in, hug in, flex through both feet. Yeah, breathe in and exhale anything you're still holding on to your today to do list for the day. See if you can stay present. Yeah, just for a few more moments. Yeah, and then switch sides left ankle crosses over right knee. Yeah, supine figure four hug your right knee in towards your chest. And give yourself some acknowledgments for the work you're putting in this morning. Yeah, there's a lot of other places you could be. You chose to connect, to move your body in a way that feels good. Yeah, that matters. Release, hug both knees into your chest and then send your left leg out long, right knee hugs in. Yeah, send your knee all the way up and over your chest, supine twist. So both shoulders stay squared to the mat. Start to shift your gaze over your right fingertips if your neck allows. Awesome work. So good, ladies and gentlemen at home. <laughs> and then switch sides. Right leg goes out long, left knee hugs in. Take your knee all the way up and over your chest. Supine twist. Yeah, one more breath in. Soften where you can, exhale. Hug both knees in tight. Bring your forehead to your knees, tight hug. Yeah, and then rock and roll gently up to a comfortable seated position right where we started. Hands come to heart center, reach your fingertips high and then bring them through heart center. Yeah, let's close our time together with one big breath in and a full exhale out. Thank you so much for joining us for yoga this morning. It's Coming back to Lily, she's going to kick us off with a video, take us through the rest of our day. Thank you for being here. It means so much. And happy National Waffle Day. Thanks, Asia and Amanda. That workout was awesome. I am coming to you guys live from the Kodiak headquarters. If you didn't know, we are based in Park City, Utah. 
Kodiak Cakes is, is an amazing place to work and there's always something fun to do here. At lunch, sometimes we'll go hiking, trail running, mountain biking, and we'll even go skiing. So if you've ever wondered what it's like to work at the Kodiak office, check this out. Hey, happy Halloween. I'm Joel Clark and this is Cameron Smith and we're mixing it up with Kodiak Cakes. They try and kill me, they gotta make some choices They running out of options Cause I've been going off And they don't know when it's stopping And we get the So as you can probably tell, the Kodiak culture is a lot of fun and like I said, there's always something going on here at the office. One of my favorite things to do is to go trail running at lunch. Speaking of lunch, waffle boards. Let's talk about it. We're about to go over to Sarah so she can teach us how to build our own custom waffle board. So what you're going to need are your waffles and your board and a few of your favorite toppings and let's start.
Well, I'm Sarah Juniman with Grazing KC. I'm a food stylist, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to build a custom waffle board. And let's get started. If you're going to be building one with me, why don't you go grab your supplies? You can really use any flat surface and basically anything if you're in your fridge if you have waffles. And if you're tuning in, we would love to see your boards, whether it's tomorrow on National Waffle Day or uh, you decide to make one later this month, next month, over the holidays, we'd still love to see it. Um, be sure to tag Kodiak Cakes and Grazing KC and we'll look at your beautiful creations. So let's get started. We, of course, are gonna start with the star of the show, which we haven't seen yet today, the waffles. And not just because they're the star of the show, but because they take up the most space on the board. So we wanna strategically place these first. And um, my first styling tip is instead of taking your waffles and just placing them in a straight line, do something fun. So if you're having a birthday party, maybe for your kid, you could set your waffles in the number two, or for example, we could put a K for Kodiak. So start out the foundation of your board um, doing something eye-catching and fun. And today I'm using these protein pack thick and fluffy waffles, which are a newer product. Um, and I'm going to set them in what I call a river. Um, I don't have a number or letter. And that's just really a swirl through the center of the board. Um, and what is better than a river of waffles? So I'm just going to lay these out and I'm using blueberry and vanilla. So I'll say, just offer your guests or your home, or maybe you have kids that you're making this for, just a variety. There's something for everyone. Um, so I'm laying these out through the board and it kind of a river looks like an S shape, um, just so it catches our eye through. And this is so fun. Um, so now I have my foundation, the waffles, and also with the foundation, the next step is your ramekins. So ramekins are really just small jars that hold anything containing liquid or syrup, um, maybe something crumbly that's like harder for guests to pick up. And so we're gonna set these. And the reason we're setting them is really because we're gonna build off of them. Instead of placing items like on the outside of the board and they're falling off, we're using these as the foundation to build around them. Um, and they're a fun shape. So I like to like put things around them and we'll talk about that when we get to styling. I'm using this Kodiak Cakes uh, Super Fruit Raspberry Syrup in one of my ramekins peanut butter and another just to continue on the protein pack train. Um, and in this last one, I'm actually using this crunchy granola bar. Um, I won't get into it, but there's so many things you can do with this. My daughter actually like likes it as cereal, funny. But here, um, I'm gonna use it as a topping so we can put this on top of our waffles. And the reason that we're also setting these is what happens when people build boards is sometimes they all end up in a corner. And so I'm kind of just off setting these so they're not all squished together. So I have mine in a little bit of a triangle, if you can see. So now that I've laid the foundation of the board, are you following along? Really any syrup, um, syrups, butter, whipped cream could go in these jars. I'm gonna kind of finish off the waffle over here. And the second step is to move to your fresh products. We want this board, um, aside from our waffles, to be full of produce. So today we're using a lot of fruit. And I'm gonna tell you my first little thing that I do with fruit is instead of, again, just placing it, I'm actually using the shapes we already have. So I have strawberries um, and you can cut them in half or you could leave them whole. Um, you could cut off the stem. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. It's all about having fun. Um, but you're gonna lay this, I'm laying it on the outside of my waffles and it really creates a pop. And the reason I'm doing this is because we're kind of creating a boundary so all the other food doesn't fall on top of the waffles causing them to get soggy. So we're creating this strawberry river um, alongside our waffle river. What's better than strawberries and waffles? Um, and I'm just gonna kind of put them along the outside. And another reason I do this besides um, to keep kind of a boundary between this and the other food is for the pop. Anytime you're using like a neutral color, which is a little styling tip, it's fun to put something bright next to it. So our neutral color waffles with our strawberries outlining it. And I hope you can see that we have a flow going on. Okay, our next produce, I'm definitely jumping in with the raspberries because we have our raspberry syrup. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pour. Some people try to like place and make everything perfect, but there's really just this dumping technique that makes the board look natural. Um, and I'm kind of just going along on the outside of the board. 
If you have a board um, with a tray, maybe, sometimes you can have a barrier. So I'm putting these raspberries here, and there we go. Berries, um, some of you guys, I actually took a little poll on my Instagram and were like, the number one thing you guys said that you liked on top of your waffle. So I'm gonna continue on that train. In a, tick, a tip with setting the blackberries is, or anything dark in color, is when you're setting, make sure that you combine it with another light color because sometimes the dark foods, your eyes can get really like sucked into them. So I'm gonna set my blackberries and I'm placing these again around my ramekins. If I was just to go and start on the outside of the board, they might fall off. Um, so I'm placing them in here. And then here's my tip. These go first and then my blueberries are gonna go on top and it really creates Volume, um, I love that word. It really creates a pop. And if it gets into your peanut butter, it incorporates it in the board. Um, so you're pouring these and kind of filling the hole. And then I like to go back and always add some on top. So if you can see, I mix my berries there. Your eye with the dark colors, it's fun to have dimension. So maybe if you're using chocolate chips, you can mix in like a chocolate bear bite and have two dark colors together. Um, it's kind of eye catching. Okay, couple last fresh items because I love to keep this board fresh. I'm gonna move to an apple and some people are like, that does might not go on a waffle. Um, but this is like a breakfast board and it's offering something for everyone. So I cut this waffle and a little trick with this is to put lemon juice on the opposite side so it doesn't brown. And now when I started, um, I didn't know, but you actually, if you leave it cut, so I have here, I cut it diagonally. Um, you can just fan it out. Instead of placing them one at a time and then you've touched all the apples and they're kind of out of order, they're in a great order. So we're gonna fan these. Again, we're building from the inside out. And I'm fanning them around uh, this raspberry fruit syrup and really just using the shape that I already have and kind of creating a circle. And I have a couple more. Um, and this is what's so fun about boards if you enjoy making them or if you want to start making them is guests have so much to choose from. So here you could dip the apple in peanut butter and put a little granola bite on it um, if they don't want something. So it's really offering a variety of products, but knowing that they're balanced um, and that they're whole foods and clean ingredients. So here we go. We have our fresh items all set. And the last little thing um, before we get to add the last touches on is thinking about um, whole food. So I actually, where is this? Um, I'm gonna use this granola bar and something you can do, again, I really feel like graze boards invite people together there to create a memory. Um, maybe this is like an after school snack or you have kids in your house and you, you wanna offer variety. Um, so you can just put these whole bars actually right on the board um, sometimes it shows people what they are, or again, they can get creative and interactive. Um, so I'm a fan of these crunchy granola bars. So I'm gonna put that on. And then same with fruits. I always choose something seasonal. So these kiwis, which actually is so fun to cut, you cut them like a little pumpkin. I used to think there was a tool for this. Uh, and if you can see, you actually just zigzag it back and forth which I would do on a cutting board, um, back and forth, and they just pull apart. So there's no really tool you need except a knife to do this. Um, and I love setting whole fruits in my boards just to make it a little seasonal. So sometimes maybe I'd use like pomegranates or figs, or you could put a whole orange on the board. I'm just offering different dimension, but I love this pop of color with the kiwis. And again, we're kind of just building from the inside out um, using these fresh ingredients. So we've set the foundation, the star of the show, the waffles. We have our ramekins with our great little syrups and toppings, our fresh produce. And next is going to be what I call the crunch. Um, I always think you need to have like a good crunch and candied pecans um, are one of my favorite little crunchy but sweet items. And so again, I'm building, maybe put a couple here. And another styling tip is instead of putting like a big pile just like dumping a whole bag of pecans or up next we're going to use uh, these chocolate bear bites instead of just dumping this whole thing on the board um kind of put a couple scattered so it kind of takes your eye throughout the board the fruit is really pretty colorful um, to put it all together but with these i'm going to offset some candied pecans over here um, and then a little around this apple and again you can just kind of dump them on 
but instead of putting a whole bag, thinking about proportions. Okay, moving to the Bear Bites, which are also always in my purse um, for my daughter. And it's a great sweet. Um, if you want to add sweet, again, you could dip this in peanut butter. You could get very creative with these. Um, but I like them as like the finishing touch on the waffle. So using these as chocolate, and really I'm just placing one or two um, and scattering them throughout the remaining holes of the board. So a couple pieces of chocolate here. If you're like me, um, I'm a sweet tooth, so have to have a little bit of these, but still knowing that they are, are pure, clean ingredients and I'm getting my protein in to start the day. Um, so I'm putting what I call, I kind of do them in a triangle going back and forth. And these are easier now. Do you see how I, they're easier to set on the outside of the board um, instead of dumping berries. And that's kind of why I did that order, um, filling it with that produce how are you guys doing if you have any questions about where you can find these products in your local stores um, you can comment in the chat and i know that we have people answering those for you um, so be sure to ask away and if you have any questions about this design i'd love to answer okay so we have the crunch and now this is really where you can take your board in any direction um, if i was hosting maybe like a bachelorette party, I could put whipped cream and sprinkles and you could like put some fun marshmallows, you could go sweet. Um, but today I'm gonna sit, stick to like the savory board. So I have bacon. Um, and again, if you've seen me build this, all I've had is a toaster. So another fun thing about using these toaster waffles is if you're not in the mood to cook, but you're hosting or having a brunch, this is like a great way not to have a lot of dishes. So I'm using this bacon, which is like the only thing on this board that I had to cook. Um, and so I am going to, but you could get pre-cooked bacon. Um, I'm going to fan this out and there is a little bit of a corner spot. Fan this out and make sure that I have a little savory crunch. Does anyone put bacon actually on their waffle or would you put it on the side? And what I mean by fan is um, a little trick when setting food is instead of just stacking it, if you're able to make this shape and kind of create a fan, it does add that volume and dimension uh, to your board. And I'm just gonna put the bacon in one spot, really make it look like a lot um, and really catch people in. And so my other savory or protein packed item, which is my finishing touch are these hard boiled eggs. And again, this board right here, um, it's really no cook. And so with these, instead of stacking them together, I am. I'm gonna include or incorporate the waffles into the board as it gets closer to the end. So I'm gonna place one or two, kind of like I did with the bear bites, um, staggered around. Hard boiled eggs. I think you are making a meal that might keep you full all day. <laughs> um, this is so fun. So here we go, depending on how many we need. And that's what a lot of people ask, how do you know how much to put on this board? Um, you can kind of count out the waffles and then count out the hard boiled eggs and think about the major ingredients versus the toppings. Um, so I've offset the hard boiled eggs and I will say finishing touches of boards, which might be the secret trick that I'm giving away, um, is to incorporate garnish. So. Again, boards are really about gathering and connecting and everyone loves a long brunch or after school snack um, where you're all just around one table. And so if you have something special, like maybe you grow rosemary or mint or you have non-poisonous flowers, just incorporating these into the board. Today I have mint um, and just adding pops. So you're like, oh, what do I do with the extra um, space on my board? Adding something fresh, um, but still so fun in color. My mom, um, she grows rosemary. So when we make these at home, everyone's like, wow, where'd you get that? And it's just a fun conversation piece to have. Um, shout out to her. I'm sure she's watching, but <laughs> um, here we go. So just adding these little touches. And so we do have some spaces on our board and that's where you can go in and pour in your extra favorite ingredients. And last but not least, um, I call it the waffle short stack instead of pancakes. Uh, I took a different type of Kodiak cakes waffle, which were the power waffles, and I cut them into fours. Um, just you could do that with a pizza cutter. 
And I love this tactic because some people are like, oh, I'm intimidated by the board. There's always someone that will go for the food on the pick um, and just want a little bite. So that's what I did here. And you could have these on the side. You could have them spilling off the board. And again, I'm all about like the volume, the dimension, um, adding that in. You could lay it down. You could get a fun party pick with a little like Kodiak bear on there and just incorporate it. Okay, so why don't we take a look at our board and think about these ramekins. Yes, I added the mint as like the final touches, but what I like to do is go in and make those jars feel like a part of the board. Um, so I'm gonna take these bear bites and just stick them in to the peanut butter, just offering people. Um, you could do that with an apple, just kind of incorporate it in the board. So it looks like a part and it's not just a random jar. Um, I'm gonna take this raspberry syrup. And again, these are our final touches and pour them. There's one on the loose. Um, pour them around the board and put them in the raspberry syrup. So a lot of times people will ask what you're serving and that's a great way to kind of show them what flavor it is. I know I love um, the apricot one of this. You can put some dried apricots um, around that. And so there we have it. Here's our board. Why don't we just like get a close up, take a look at the beautiful creation that you've made. I feel like all my dreams are coming true with a waffle board right now. Yes. If you guys have any questions, ask them in the chat. I would love to answer them. Um, again, there is a little space. I did have bowl butter, which normally people like pass around, um, but you can include this in the board. Yes, can we see? Take a look. So here's our river that we started with and our ramekins and then building from the inside out. Okay, and do not be afraid to have your guests dive in after this. Whether you are the person who loves like four waffles with butter and peanut butter or you're the person who might just take like an apple and peanut butter and a bear bite this really truly is for you and there's no better product than kodiak cakes because you know that you're getting a balanced meal you have clean ingredients and most of all you're feeding people um, and making memories so thank you so much i hope you had fun i hope you learned something and next up are giveaways I'm back. <laughs> can everybody, we're still good on, on the mic. We can hear. Awesome. Well, I am telling you, this waffle board looks amazing. And if you want to catch a picture of it, we will be putting it on the Kodiak Cake social. So make sure you check in after the event and you can get a live look at what this looks like before all of us here dig in. So we are going to be doing a few more giveaways. If you are just joining in, make sure that you put it in the comments, let us know that you're new here and what you've learned. Um, before we hop right into giveaways, we've gotten a lot of questions about where you can find some of this product. So um, our bear bite that Sarah was talking about, like the chocolate graham crackers, they are amazing. I have sat before on my couch and eaten a whole box. So I have a feeling that you could too. Um, bear bites are in Kroger stores nationwide. So if you don't know if you have a Kroger by you or maybe you have a Kroger sister store, check out our store locator. We'll have Danielle and Casey put that in the chat and you can literally click bear bites and find what store is closest to you. Um, something also about our crunchy bars, our crunchy granola bars. These are the best snacks to take with you, whether you're going on a day hike or again, whether you're going to a workout class, whatever your adventure may be, make sure you get your hands on some of those. Those will be launching nationwide in Walmart stores. I'm getting word right now. Danielle, when is that again? Crunchy bars are September 8th in all Walmart stores. And then 
Um, all of the waffles that Sarah used today were our frozen waffles. You'll see our new thick and fluffy waffles are amazing. They're so delicious. And you can find our frozen waffles in pretty much any retailer. If you want to know exactly what retailer near you, again, we'll have Casey and Danielle put that store locator. Or if you're lazy like me, you can just be like, what's up? I'm in Kansas City and I need to know where I can find some. So they'll also get those to you. All right, I think it's time that we're gonna hop into these giveaways. I got a text saying that I need to be a little more peppy. So I'm trying. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and go where again, we're gonna do four giveaways. We're gonna do the Kodiak Adventure Pack, the Kodiak Fit Pack, the Kodiak Cooking Pack, and the Kodiak Apparel Pack. So let's go ahead and start with the Adventure Pack. Danielle's gonna be picking for me, so drum roll. We have Christian, Christian at Think Food. Woo! And then also, again, Casey and Danielle will be putting in the chat of what to do when you win. You'll be emailing collabs at kodiakcakes.com. Um, so, Christian, my, that's awesome. Who's the next one? For Kodiak Fit, we have, drum roll please, Cassandra. And so, per. Cassandra at Purple Passion 126. Yes, I'm so proud. I'm jumping up and down. All right. For the Kodiak Apparel Pack, we have Kara. Kara at Kara Rose Brennan. Woo, I'm pumped for you, Kara. The final Kodiak cooking pack for this round of giveaways. Terry. TWC Mars. Okay, yes, Terry, we've been seeing you in the comments and we love the interaction. So now you get a little giveaway too. I'm so proud of you. Perfect for all of your cooking adventures, Terry. And then for all of your other cooking adventures, make sure you tag at Kodiak Cakes with the, again, the event hashtag is hashtag Kodiak NWD for National Waffle Day. And we're going to go ahead and head it over to Lily. <laughs> and we're going to be getting ready for Shanna and Aubrey's Q&A next. So stay tuned. Thanks, Sarah. That class was so awesome. And I'm going to definitely be pulling out all of those tips and tricks at the next brunch. If you follow us on Kodiak Social, at Kodiak Cakes, you probably know who these two little cubs are. And if you don't, you've got to go check it out. We have two little taste testers who run around here and always give us their honest opinions and reviews of our product. So here's a little behind the scenes look. Hi. We're going to be showing you how to make flapjacks. We're making um, a Kodiak cake here, um, and mine, um, mine's a um, marshmallow flavor. <laughs> How long is it? Like 500 seconds. 5 or 10 minutes. I count to 100 or so. <laughs> Ready and go. You're probably wondering. <laughs> Um, the, the Kodiak cakes are really good. Yeah, I got it. Like, Kodiak cakes are in Park City. I will be backing out of the city. I'm we'll find them at Costco. You're also at China. You yeah, both look at me and smile. That's all, folks. Like I said, those Kodiak Cubs always keep us on our toes. Now we're gonna kick it over to Shanna, a registered dietitian, and Aubrey, a recipe developer, and they're gonna be answering all of your questions about all things health, wellness, and nutrition. So if you have any questions, drop them in the chat box, and we'll ask them so they can get it to you live. So, stay tuned.
today. My name is Aubrey. I'm from Kale Couture, and I am a recipe developer. And I'm Shanna from Wellness for the Win, and I am a registered dietitian. So we're going to go ahead and start doing our live Q&A. So we're going to start with a couple questions, but feel free if you're watching um, to send in some questions for us in the comment box, and we'll read them here and answer them as best we can. So one of the first questions that we got was, if someone had to make one new habit or change to be healthier, what would you suggest? And Shannon and I kind of talked about this earlier. And for me, um, I think the most important thing is just making something attainable, something that you can maintain. So you know, when you're just starting out and taking your first steps, it shouldn't be something that's a complete lifestyle 360. It should be something that is a small change that you can apply maybe to your every day or do three to five days a week. Don't make it something that's so far out of reach to begin with, because that's kind of what sets you up for failure. So I would say maybe make a small goal of, you know, 10 to 20 minutes of activity three days a week. Don't go, you know, crazy and say, I'm going to do an hour hour long workout seven days a week. Make it something small that you can do every single day or a couple days a week. And then that'll kind of get you on the track to creating a habit. Yeah, I would echo everything she said. I think small, realistic goals are definitely the key to success long term. Um, and also keep in mind, it doesn't necessarily have to be related to food or exercise. It could be improving your sleep habits or drinking more water or, you know, things like that. Um, if it is diet related, like she said, you know, don't expect yourself to go from eating out for every meal every day to meal prepping for seven days a week. That's totally not realistic and probably not going to last for very long. Um, so yeah, definitely make small, realistic goals. It could be as simple as, you know, adding some color to your plate every meal. So adding in some fruits and vegetables here and there. Um, so it could be, you know, all kinds of different things. It could be five minutes of meditation a day. Um, so definitely, you know, think about what would be the biggest priority to you and what would most benefit your physical, mental, emotional health, all of those aspects, um, and kind of start there. Okay. Um, one of the next one was favorite waffle toppings. Um, and I have to say, after watching that amazing board <laughs> be created, I, it's hard to pick one. But for me, I would say some sort of nut butter, almond butter, or peanut butter is always my go-to. Um, and then second in line would probably be chocolate chips or raspberries. I would second the nut butter of some sort. I always have some sort of drizzle going on. Usually almond butter, but peanut butter is one of my love languages as well. <laughs> um, any kind of berry. I like, I always have frozen blueberries on hand. So those are really easy. You can quickly thaw them in the microwave if you don't have any fresh on hand. Um, I'm like Sarah too. I like to have a little bit of crunch. So I usually put some sort of like pecans or walnuts on top to finish it off and, you know, give you some good healthy fats too. So you really can't go wrong. Pretty much everything <laughs> she had on her board had me drooling. So yeah. <laughs> okay. The next one was what is the best way to prep a lot of pancakes slash muffles slash waffles, waffles <laughs> and store them? And for me, um, if you, any of you have followed me, Pancake Bites is one of my go-tos. It's one of my OG recipes, and that's because it's A, so easy, requires minimal ingredients, and B, is so easy to make a lot of at one time and then store them for the rest of the week. So I make Pancake Bites, which is just an easier way of making a bunch of pancakes at one time in a muffin tin. Um, so you can make 12 like of the bigger muffins, pancake bites, or you can make the mini size, which is 24. But I just keep them in Tupperware in the fridge, and they last all week long, so they're super easy to just get out, pop in the microwave, and you're good to go. So that's my, that's my kind of hack at prepping waffles um, or pancakes. I would second that. Definitely, you know, they're very much, you know, storage friendly in the refrigerator for a couple of days. But a lot of those types of things are also freezer friendly. So if you put them in a freezer safe, container of some sort, whether that's a baggie that's freezer safe or some sort of storage container. Um, typically, you can throw those in the freezer as well and just pop them in like the toaster or the microwave to reheat. Um, and that's a super easy prep option as well. And I love doing that kind of thing for weeks that I didn't necessarily have time to prep something fresh. Um, just having that kind of backup just saves so much time. So if you're a busy mom or just busy in general, <laughs> um, it helps to have that kind of thing on hand. Yeah, that's the great thing about Kodiak Cakes is you don't have to do a lot of prep if you don't want to. So that is why the waffles are a go-to. Grab them out of the freezer, pop them in the microwave or the toaster oven, and you're good to go. So yes. definitely prep friendly. <laughs> and you're still getting some whole grains and protein. So it's a good balanced option too. Yes. <laughs> Start with yours. All right. Let's see what other questions we have. So someone asked, easiest hot breakfast recipe that you can batch and freeze. So I kind of, I guess we just, just yeah. kind of touched on that. 
But another breakfast recipe that isn't necessarily freezer friendly, but that I love to do a lot of the time is make like a batch of hard boiled eggs for the week. Mm -hmm. um, that makes a super easy breakfast option. That's kind of a grab and go thing. A lot of people love that option for um, like a, an easy work breakfast if you're just running out the door. Um, and this isn't necessarily a, a prep option, but um, like Greek yogurt is an easy thing or overnight oats. Those are all pretty easy things to make ahead of time that are minimal effort, but you know, save so much yeah. time and effort later in the week. And I have um, a recipe, I just made it not too long ago, and that is steel cut oats in the crock pot. So it's yes. super easy, super minimal um, ingredients, easy prep. You just throw the steel cut oats in water into your crock pot and you can put it on low for three to four hours and you're good to go. You can add some protein powder in there if that is something that you're into, um, but that's an easy hot breakfast that you can store in the fridge and then just get out however much you need every day of the week, pop it in the microwave and you're good to go. So that's a good hot option. And that'll be great for fall and winter coming up soon. Yes. So yay. yeah, I need to try that. Um, okay, so someone asked our go-to Kodiak Cakes product. So what's your fave Kodiak Cakes product? My fave is the strawberry chocolate chip pancake mix. It is my all-time favorite. Like I said, fruit and chocolate <laughs> is like my jam. So mm -hmm. that pancake mix, pancake and waffle mix is my absolute favorite. Brownies are second best, but I love <laughs> the strawberry chocolate chip. Yeah. Honestly, all of my go-tos I feel like are just the flapjack and waffle mixes, like literally any flavor. I do love the dark chocolate. I love the buttermilk. I even love the gluten-free. So in yeah. case you guys didn't know, they have a gluten-free option. Yep. It's actually really delicious and yeah. tastes equally great as all the other ones. So a really good option for anyone who needs that. Yep. My newest favorite is the cornbread mix. A lot of people, I posted about that and a lot of people didn't know that they had that available. So that is one of my favorites. We also have a recipe for it in the recipe book that you'll be getting emailed later. Um, so you'll definitely want to try that. Just spoiler alert, it has jalapenos in it, some cheese and Greek yogurt for even more protein. So good. You will love. <laughs> I will say too, if you are plant-based, the plant-based mix that was new to me and one of the newer products um, is amazing. So I know sometimes people shy away from plant-based items just because the quality is not always as good as non-plant-based non items, but their plant-based pancake mix is phenomenal. So if you see that, pick that one up. Really, really good. Yay. Awesome. Um, let's see. So one more before we go to some that came in the, the comments. Um, so someone asked how to get more protein in. Um, do you want to? Yeah. I mean, I think one? protein is in so many things that we don't really think about. So I think when people say protein, you automatically think protein powder, and that's not necessarily always the case. I love things like turkey sausage, cottage cheese, yogurt, just things that, you know, I don't think people think of as protein packed, but they really are. Um, so I would just say any form of, you know, obviously your normal, the things that you think of, which are meats, also cheese, there's tons of protein in cheese. Uh, yogurts, dairy, all of those things. I think it's easy to add in just little things here and there that aren't necessarily like jam packed with protein, but little bits along the way will kind of get you to a lot more protein in your diet in a more consistent, on a more consistent basis. Yeah, I would agree with that. So like she said, I think a lot of people automatically automatically think of either protein supplements or meat, um, but there definitely are so many different options than that. Like she, she covered a lot of these. So dairy, eggs, of course, nuts and seeds, nut butters, they definitely do add up. So my biggest tip for people is to always be sure to incorporate some sort of protein source at every meal and ideally every snack as well, uh, because protein keeps you full longer, provides satiety, um, so you're not constantly feeling hungry. So you want to obviously, the goal usually after a meal is to feel satisfied and full. Um, so definitely protein and healthy fat can both help with that. So yeah. And then I think we'll take some comments, um, questions from the comments. <laughs> oh gosh, that's a kind of a loaded question. <laughs> okay, so the question was how do, how does social equality, equity? Okay, so social, how do we balance like social health and wellness, kind of combine them and keep a balance? So I think this is relevant to the conversations that have been kind of brought up in the past couple of months. Um, I think the, the most important thing is to make all things wellness more accessible to all. Um, so things like this, for example, this is a free event, it's virtual, so hopefully, you know, it's accessible to people of all all different walks of life. Um, and that's really the goal ideally is to make everything more 
um, accessible to everyone. So I think that's that's one of the big things um, is to make it not so difficult for people to be healthy. Um, and same with like these products. Obviously, you know, we discussed a lot of whole foods um, that are healthy options, but um, Kodiak cakes, you know, you don't always have to have whole foods in order to be healthy. Um, I think that's a barrier for a lot of people thinking that they have to buy all organic or all these fancy things or, you know, matcha tea. And, you know, it doesn't have to be as, as uh, fancy as Instagram makes it look sometimes. Right. Um, so yeah, just making it more attainable for everybody, I think is the, the goal. Yeah. And just one more thing I'll add, that was great. Um, one more <laughs> thing is just price point. I would say, you know, one of the, one thing that a lot of people come to me with is, you know, I, I don't have a whole foods or I don't have, you know, sprouts or these really specific places to buy, you know, things like healthy products. And I think that's, what's great about Kodiak cakes is a, their price point is amazing. They're super affordable. So I think that you know, they're more reachable to all demographics and they're available at places like Target and Walmart and places that we all have access to. So you're not, you know, kind of cornered into having to go to those really kind of expensive, specific health food stores. So I think that's another way that that kind of balances the two. Yep. Uh, what is your strategy to practice What is our best suggestion to practice relaxation? Mm. I can go. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, let me think. <laughs> um, so this has been a fairly new thing in my life, and I feel like during this pandemic, I've tried to prioritize it more. I'm definitely not perfect, but I've started using a guided meditation app. So I personally use Headspace, but I know there's a ton of options out there like Calm, Insight Timer, lots of different things, or even YouTube, you know, has so many different uh, videos for guided meditations. But I love to do that. Not... I don't almost, I usually don't do it during the day. I like to do it before bed because um, if you're anything like me, you have a really hard time turning your brain off ever. Um, so especially before bed, I, I just find it really helpful to do even like a 15 minute guided meditation usually puts me right to sleep and I feel like it helps so much with my mental health. Um, so that's been a big one for me yeah. personally. And for me, um, I feel like mine looks more like a walk. Um, so I've been trying to that's utilize <laughs> time outside lately, especially when we transition to fall and it gets a little bit nicer um, and leaving my phone at home for walks. I used to be like tied to my phone for music purposes and I've just tried to start leaving it at home um, and I take my dog for a walk. Even if it's just 10 to 15 minutes, just starting or ending your day that way I feel like is so beneficial. And like I said, try to leave your phone at home and just see the difference that it makes because even if you're just playing music, I feel like it keeps your brain going and I feel like just kind of disconnecting for 10 to 15 minutes a day can be amazing. So that yes. is what I would say as far as relaxation. How much protein should females actually have in a day when they are regularly working out? Another loaded question. Yeah. <laughs> so protein needs are based off of your body weight. Um, so technically the RDA or the recommended dietary allowance is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. Um, however, that's kind of like the minimum that most people need. So protein needs are definitely going to vary significantly for a variety of factors. Um, if you're more active, typically one to 1.5 grams per kilogram could be a good goal. Of course, that's a big range. Uh, but again, you know, you would have to work with a registered dietitian or someone um, to kind of help you nail down your specific needs for your goals. Um, so hopefully that helps give you kind of a general idea on that. But like I said, the, the best thing that you can do is try to incorporate roughly like 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal. Um, and that will usually kind of help you meet your goals. And um, if you're incorporating some at snacks as well, then you're probably probably meeting your needs. Um, a lot of people say it, it people kind of go back and forth because some people are like, oh, you know, Americans are consuming way too much protein. That is the case for some who are consuming like really large quantities of meat. Um, but for people who are, for example, vegetarian or vegan or eat very small amounts of meat, they actually may not be meeting their protein needs. Um, so it can be helpful to check in every once in a while with yourself and say, okay, you know, where is protein coming from in my diet? Am I getting adequate amounts? Is it supporting my activity level and all of those things? So again, Lots of factors to consider, but um, yeah, make sure you're you're getting enough. Um, how do I add veggies to my breakfast? Veggies? Shanna's a lot better breakfast <laughs> than I am. Um, I'm more of like a sweet breakfast person. I feel like she's she balances both really well. But um, I would say veggies. Add them to your eggs. Like you know, do an omelet or a frittata or something like that. That's super easy to add veggies to eggs. So that's definitely one way. 
Um, other than that, I used to be on a big like green smoothie kick. So just adding spinach to your smoothies, or I know one thing that people don't think about very often, but frozen rice cauliflower is a really easy way to um, add veggies without adding any flavor. Like obviously it doesn't taste like cauliflower. So <laughs> if you've never tried it, tried it, you can put that in place um, in place of your ice. So it gives you kind of a really thick consistency, adds you know fiber and all the good things, healthy vitamins and nutrients that are in veggies. Um, into your morning smoothie. So that's two two things that come to mind for me. I would agree with those. I, I think smoothies are a great tip for a lot of people who struggle in general, not just at breakfast, but <laughs> through their whole day to get vegetables in. Um, if you don't feel like you really love vegetables, spinach or rice cauliflower, like she said, any sort of veggie that you can toss into a smoothie um, and kind of blend it in and hide, hide it. Um, so that's not only a good tip for children, but also for adults who don't necessarily love vegetables. Um, I definitely do the, the veggies in my eggs. I try to do some spinach in my eggs every morning. Um, but any kind of like chopped frozen vegetable will also work. So if, again, if you don't have fresh stuff on hand, you can do chopped frozen spinach or bell peppers or onions or whatever you like. Um, so there's definitely lots of options there. Or you could even do not only an omelet or like uh, fresh scrambled eggs, but you could also do like those egg muffin cups. Um, that's another thing that you can kind of prep for the week. So those are easy to stick vegetables in. Yeah. And another one that you could do is um, like baked goods. So whether it's like whole, whole grain, banana zucchini muffins, or I have a really good recipe for um, pumpkin carrot muffins. So you're getting both pumpkin and carrot, which it's, so it's loaded with nutrition, but it's, they're so delicious. Um, not to toot my own horn, but <laughs> um, so there's definitely lots of options and, you know, it's okay to be creative and sneak vegetables in. It's not like you need a, a side salad at your breakfast to, to be successful. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid to kind of sneak them in in, in, in creative ways. So for me, I feel like sometimes recipe developer is such a fancy name for what I do because I just don't see it as anything other than just looking at recipes that are already created and finding different ways to, you know, make swaps or make them healthier. Um, so it's not like I start from a blank slate and, you know, think, how can I create a new muffin? I know some people do that, but that's just not me. I don't have time for it. And that's just not the way that I go about recipe development. Um, so for me, you know, whether it's looking at a Kodiak Cakes box and looking at their recipes that they've you know, already created and saying, can I sneak a little protein powder into this? Or can I add, you know, veggies to these egg cups? Or can I, you know, just adding or taking away certain things that we already know and love and making them, you know, fit into our diet in a, in a more healthy way. So I definitely think that term or thinking about creating recipes is so daunting and it doesn't have to be that way. It's just sneaking things in or taking things away and trying to make them better fit your diet. I would definitely agree with everything she said. I think so many people are intimidated by cooking and recipes, and it really does not have to be complicated. A lot of times I just encourage people to kind of take inventory of their own kitchen and, you know, check out what's in your fridge, what's in your pantry, what's in your freezer, and just kind of pairing things together. And, you know, it doesn't always have to be a perfect recipe to be delicious. So, um, you know, start small, for example, like I'm a huge Aldi shopper. If you follow me, you know that I love Aldi. Um, and they have like these grain pouches that are literally just nothing but whole grains. So like brown rice mixes or quinoa mixes. Um, so that's a microwavable option. So there you go. There's your healthy whole grain starch of the meal. Um, and from there you could do, you know, frozen steamable vegetables, and then you could make some sort of protein to go with it. So it really doesn't have to be this super complicated process where it takes an hour to cook a fancy meal. Um, it could just be kind of a combination of, of easy things. And then I always encourage people to, you know, if you're starting out with trying to like do meal planning or meal prep, um, you know, maybe start with like two or three meals a week that you're going to plan in advance. And every week, you know, we all have kind of our go-to recipes that we like. So, you know, definitely still rely on those and maybe one, one recipe per week, try something new. Um, so that can make, you know, keep things kind of fun and, and get some variety in your diet, but not make it feel overwhelming. So yeah. one thing I would add to, once you land on a recipe that you like, like I'm taking my protein balls, for example. If you find like a base recipe of something that you really like and enjoy, just change things out. Change the fruits or change the vegetables or change, you know, certain ingredients to make them different without recreating the wheel. So if you find something that you like, stick with that and just kind of interchange things and see how far you can go with it.
Don't overcomplicate it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So you're getting oh, so the yours. cookbook tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Um, it'll be delivered to your email inbox, right? So your email. So stay tuned for that. Um, so my recipe is I am making a funfetti slash birthday cake mug cake, um, a kind of knockoff McGriddle. So that is the second one. And then my last one. Yes. <laughs> my last one. What is my last one? I can't even think. Come back to me. Let me think of that first one. <laughs> Um, okay, so I know I have pregnancy brain, so I'm gonna have to think too. Like I mentioned, the jalapeno cheddar cornbread muffins, which are going to be so good for the fall, along with like crockpot chili. I'm just drooling just thinking about it. Um, and then another one is a mixed berry crisp, so you can use any kind of berries that you like. Um, and that's something that you could serve along with ice cream for a little bit of a treat, or you could even serve it with like with Greek yogurt of some sort if you wanted a little bit of a healthier, lower sugar option. But that one is delicious also. Um, oh my gosh, and now I'm forgetting my last one. I'll give you a second. My chocolate covered strawberry pancake bites. So oh yeah, a spin. Oh yes, and then my other one is the brownie bites with um, like crushed freeze dried strawberries on the outside. Such a good treat and and honestly a good snack because I got some protein too. So yes, they're all going to be so delicious. We are so <laughs> excited. So definitely look, be on the lookout for that tomorrow. We can't wait to see you guys recreate them. So tag us yes. if you make them. <laughs> good. So mine is wellness for the win. It's F-O-R, not the number four. <laughs> <laughs> and mine is kale couture, both spelled with K's. So that's where you can find us. Yep. Okay, okay, we're gonna pass it off to Lily and she's gonna do our last round of giveaways. So we're gonna hand it off to her. Thanks for Thanks watching. For watching. <laughs> Good. Okay, so we're gonna do the last round of giveaways. So pumped for this. I know that you guys are as well. Um, Again, as you can see on the picture, we're going to be doing a Kodiak Adventure Pack, a Kodiak Fit Pack, a Kodiak Cooking Pack, and a Kodiak Apparel Pack. So everybody start typing away, and Danielle, our magic giveaway picker, is going to pick some people. So let's start out with the Kodiak Adventure Pack. All right. Okay, yep. So the giveaway winner is going to be Amy at Amy Doug P. Woo! And again, Casey is going to be having all of the information in the chat box of who you need to email, where you need to email, what you need to say, so we can get all of these goodies to you guys. So congrats, Amy. And let's do the Kodiak Fit next. Brianna, Brianna Martinez, 19. Woo! <laughs> Congrats. So happy. <laughs> okay, the next one? Yes. The next one we're going to be doing the Kodiak cooking. The cooking is Billy from NH Lumberjack. Yes, a den Billy, NH Lumberjack. Woo! <laughs> so pumped for you. Yes, the final is going to be, oh, no, it's Kodiak Apparel. We have the Kodiak, Appar Kodiak Apparel left. This is going to be a good one. I feel it. And that one is, I'll do an extra, extra scroll. We got Jocelyn from JA.Dennis15. Ooh, okay. Jocelyn, you've got a long name. Hold on. JA.Dennis15. Woo! Yay! The crowd goes wild. Okay, well, congrats to all of our giveaway winners. And from all of us here in Kansas City, we have one last little thing. So just one moment. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you so much. Shout out to Kevin, the best videographer in the game.
Thanks Aubrey and Shanna for answering those questions for us. And thank you at home for tuning in to our live National Waffle Day virtual event. We've had so much fun celebrating and we hope you have too. Remember, if you've shared anything on social, make sure you tag us at Kodiak Cakes and with the hashtag Kodiak NWD. Now that the event is over, what can you expect? We're going to be sending you an email with an exclusive Kodiak Cakes National Waffle Day cookbook that Aubrey and Shanna helped us create and a link so you can rewatch the event over and over again. Remember, the official National Waffle Day is tomorrow, August 24th. So from us here at Kodiak Cakes, happy early National Waffle Day. And again, thank you so much for tuning in.